Friday. God is already on the move. Amen. Amen. Yes. Such a wonderful God we serve. Like we just seek him and he's like, I'm waiting on you. You know, I always get that uh, um, satisfaction and that surprise that many times we just look at it like I'm waiting on the Lord, but He's like, I'm waiting on you. That's right. <clears throat> when are you going to catch up with me? Hallelujah. So um, the God who shows up when we seek Him, the God who answers, the God who believes in us. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. You know, many times we just look at somebody, um, a God, we need to believe in God, but the truth is, he believes in us. And don't Amen. You know he believes in you. Yes, he does. And when he believes in you, he'll, that's why he has anointed you. Because he believes in you. Amen. You know, nobody really needs to give me a pep talk as long as I know Jesus is with Not me. Not one. Yeah. <laughs> he can tell me, hey, I believe you. I can care less who believes in me or not. Right. Many times I don't even believe in myself. <laughs> Have you ever been there? You know, I, I told myself, man, if I were you, I would never bet on you. <laughs> because I'm so fickle-minded. I just go up and down. I go yeah. left and right all the time. I'm, I'm just easily swayed. But bless God, God trusts in me. God believes in me Amen. that he is willing to entrust me with his vision, with his purpose, and with his will into yeah. my life. Today, i like for us to get into the word of God today. Amen. And here's something from the Lord that I believe is going to give us an inspiration to go where we are going. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Do you believe you're on your way? On yes. my way. <laughs> if you are on your way, you're required to do some things. You can never be on your way without preparing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Many times we miss our opportunities not because the opportunities weren't there, but because we have never done the preparation for the opportunity. Yes. This, is, this is a statement I like for you to remember, get it etched in your memory. When opportunity prepares prepara when opportunity meets preparation, your success will happen. When opportunity meets your preparation, your success happens. People are waiting on opportunities so badly, but they have never submitted themselves to preparation. If you don't prepare, you, can, you will miss your opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm, not gonna, I'm not trying to be a naysayer, but I'm trying to be real with you. Mm -hmm. I want us to be real with God because God is real and He deals with us in reality. He is not a mystical God or a mysterious God. Somehow you're going to find a pot of gold in your yard without you preparing. You have to prepare. When you prepare, there comes the opportunity. Many of you have not recognized the opportunities because you have not prepared. Mm -hmm. If you are willing to prepare, you will see the opportunity. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Many times they are, you know, Bible says, it talks about the, uh, 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 the secret treasures or the hidden riches of the secret places. Hidden treasures of the secret places. If it is a secret place, how can you go? The last time when you go maybe to Atlanta, probably these two major uh, 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 chains that you know, uh, which is Cook and, and uh, Chick-fil-A, their biggest, Chick-fil-A's biggest success is their chicken sandwich. The recipe for that chicken sandwich, the original recipe for the chicken sandwich, is locked in a vault. Nobody has access to it. The same thing is true for Coke. Coca-Cola. Their recipe is locked. The original recipe is locked in a vault in Atlanta. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know, um, uh, if it is a secret, it is not for public to know. But I told you the game is rigged, right? Yeah. Our father is in the business of revealing things to us. Amen. He wants to reveal things to us. He wants to show things to us that are hidden for a naked eye. He wants to show things to us that have not been part of common man's perspective. Indeed. But God wants to show those things only if you prepare. Indeed. 
Even if God is trying to show things to you, you cannot see them because you have not been prepared. So that's that's why every day you wake up, look for it, look at it as a day to prepare. Amen. Every time you're getting dressed up, think of yourself, I'm preparing for God. Yes, Lord. I'm preparing for my yes, opportunity. Lord. Because I know something great has been already yes, assigned yes, for me. Yes, yes. Something great is going to happen to yes. me today. So I am preparing myself so I may position that the greatness will yes, fall on Papa, me. Yes. Amen. 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 How many of you believe God wants to establish you? Oh, yes, Amen. we do. There shall be generational wealth coming into our life. Yes, it is. Generational. Oh, Not yes, something yeah. that you just barely get by and looking for your social security. Yeah. That is not how the blessing not works. Bad. That is not how blessing works. Blessing is not about living off of the crumbs, but the blessing is about living in the abundance. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, mind you, it's not about money. Come it is now. not about money. There is so much in you that you have to give to others than money. Amen. There is somebody that is out there sick who needs you to go lay hands on them. Yes. You better Amen. come on. You know, the kids are going to the schools thinking, I have to be the hip person in the school. And they are trying to mingle in the school, try to wear their suit coats when you have been given the mantle of the Lord. Hallelujah. You need to take up on that mantle and give to somebody else because somebody out there doesn't have what you got. Yes. They need hope. They need the future. God has promised, I have plans to give you a future and a hope. And a hope. Yes. That is who we are. Mm -hmm. We live by hope. We live in the plan of God, not according to our will. You better come on now. We submit ourselves to the will of God. When we submit ourselves to the will of God, the Bible promises that He will exalt us in, mm, come on. in due time. Yes, sir. Yes, hallelujah. So many of us right now, especially I have a heart to speak to the young people that are here. Yes. So many of us are imitating somebody else. Yes. It's time to stop imitating somebody else. Please say that. And please. imitate God alone. Yes. We don't need to be like them rappers. We don't need to be you like those people that are on the street. We don't need to be like anybody come else on. but you. Right. Amen? Yeah. God has created you uniquely with a purpose that nobody can do that. Come on. I'm, a, I'm one of a kind. Amen? Amen? Can somebody say that? I'm one of a kind. I am one of a kind. The mold was broken. There is nobody, there is nobody that can be like you. Amen. God has made you special. Let's go with me to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 6 chapter starting at verse 10. You know, today we look at people, everybody is looking for their gadgets. Everybody looks like, oh, I have this kind of a truck. You know, if you are a guy, we talk about the machine, how big my machine is. Oh, I have this kind of a motor. I have that thing. I have, I have a uh, 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 F-250 or I have this. I have that. We talk about muscle. We, we talk about this. And for me, if you are someone like me, I'll be talking about what kind of a TV you got. I got this 4K TV. I got this 8K TV. I, I, but we always look at things, try to define us, try to tell about us, hey, this is what we are. Amen. You know, my sister, I love my sister. She is on a mission now to make me stop not buy a TV for, for Black Friday. Because every Black Friday I buy a TV. I just need to upgrade my TVs. So my sister has made a commitment that she somehow is going to stop me from buying a TV. You know what? I love you, my sister. But <laughs> let the Lord lead me <laughs> into the green pastures, right? <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the word now. Finally, 10th verse. Um, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that Amen. you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. All right. What, what, what was the instruction here? He says he needs you to be strong. 
Can the law, okay, you know, God needs us to be strong, not weak. God needs us to be strong in Him. Not in our strength, in our abilities, in our skills. If any, we should be weak in our skills and our abilities. But He says, I need you to be strong in the Lord, in the power of His might. He needs us to be strong in there. But for you to be strong in there, he gives an instruction. He says, put on the whole armor of God. Can somebody shout, put on? Put on. I said, shout. Can put somebody? On. Oh, there you go. That's my crowd. All right. Put on the whole armor of God. God is asking us to put on the whole armor of God. You know, many times Christians are expecting it for the armor to fall on them. Somehow the armor is going to be upon them or fall on them. I'm, somehow I'm going to walk into this thing and I'm going to have all of it. But the word of God clearly says it is up to you to put, put it on. Every morning when you wake up, you're putting on your clothes. Amen? Amen. And you're putting on things, you're doing things, that means you're doing things on purpose. Now the Bible clearly says, the Word of God clearly says, you need to put on the armor of God on purpose. We have to do it on purpose. If you don't put it on, you are open, man. You are open. You are open for what? For the wiles of the devil. Amen. Yes. If we don't learn how to put on. This is not about God gave me an armor. It is about you putting it on. God could be giving you everything. I say that. You know remember I told you. Opportunity is being given by God. Yes. We don't look at putting on the armor of God as an opportunity. That is your opportunity as, uh, you know, every day you are going into the field, every day you are getting into something, God is asking you, or not, not even asking, He is commanding you to put on the armor of God. Many of you are going into your day or into the plan of the devil because you have not put on the armor. You better come out. We have a psychological, a mental idea about the armor of God. We know if I ask you what is the armor of God, half of you can quote me what is the armor of God. But that doesn't mean a thing to you until you put it on. Amen. Today, uh, for once in a probably this is our coldest week maybe in Florida. We have these warm clothes that are inside. That we've been waiting all year. When is that day coming? That one day that I can wear my boots. <laughs> that one day I can, I can show up. I have long sleeves too. Yeah. You know that one day that comes in our life. We are, we are ready. But if you don't put on. They're not going to put themselves on. Right. Amen. The armor of God has been given to us. Yeah. God has blessed us with the armor of God. God has given, look at this thing. It is not an armor of man, it's the armor of God. In other words, what God is using has been given to us. Yeah. How did the ancient of days stay in the battle and never saw, never saw a defeat in his life? Because he puts on his armor every day. Yeah. He never leaves the armor. He does it. Remember, he never asks you to do something that he doesn't do. Amen. Amen. He puts on the armor, his own thing. This is, this is something that would fit. This is not like the ex-anointed, which is Saul, who is trying to give his armor to the David. It is not like that. But this is something that is custom fit just for you. The way that God has created it, it would fit you. So you... Now have to make a conscious decision. Yes. I'm putting on yes. the armor of God. Yes. 
Even if it may sound silly, I like for you to do this as an exercise every day. As you are putting your top on, I'm putting my armor. Mm. Uh -huh. okay. I'm putting my armor. Mm. Now guess what? Now you become the real threat to the devil. Mm. Okay. Until now you are devil's playground. Mm. Because you have a knowledge about this armor of God, but you never put it on. You don't even know I've been stabbing you. That's exactly how the devil thinks. <laughs> so I, 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 just for a reminder again, let's read this whole armor thing. I want, how many of you want to stand? Going to stand. Amen. You want to stand or you want to fall? Stand. 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 Think about it. Think about it. If you want to fall, I'm going to tell you something. You don't need no Jesus. Mm-hmm. You don't need no Jesus. When you have come into Jesus, the mission for you is to stand. That's what he said. Yeah. You need to stand. That is where he is like, look at this. He was talking to the wind and he says, be still, stand still. That's what he said. He was commanding everything to stand in the name of Jesus. Yes, it is. That is our job. We can make our glory be to God. Remember when Joshua was there, he said, the Bible says, the sun stood still. Amen. Mm -hmm. hey. You have the capacity to command things to stand still. Right Amen. there. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You have the capacity to make Hallelujah. things stand still. Yes, not make them move. There is no chaos. Hallelujah. You don't need to be living in chaos. You live in perfect peace. Yes, in in Jesus' Lord. name. Glory. Remember, Pastor was talking about something. I'm not going to participate in the depression That's or the recession. What I said. Said. You know why? Because you're going to command your finances yes. to stand still yes. in yes. Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because you are going to be standing, yes. you will not fall. Yes. Amen. Otherwise, the devil is going to take over you. Yes. The circumstances around you are going to take yes. over you. Yes. Every yes. single opinion that is out yes. there is taking yes. over you. It's yes. loose. God never said, oh, look upon the Democrats, look upon the Republicans. No, God said, look upon me, for I am the Lord my God. Yes, yes. come on now. You in there, you in there. Come on. Now that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, please read the 12th verse. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand mm -hmm. in the evil days and having done mm -hmm. all to stand. He says, take up. He says, take up. The Lord ain't going to do that to you. He is not. If you are expecting God, protect my, protect me, protect me. He says, no, 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 I gave you the armor. Yes, I did. Put it on. Yes. I need you to become those obedient Christians, not those fake Christians who just say things and not do it. Bible has a good word for them. It's called hypocrite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have a bunch of them. Yeah. We have a bunch of them Christians who are hypocrites. Mm. They say something and never do it. And I know that. <laughs> the Lord is not going to do that for you. It is you who has to do that for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I got my back. <laughs> you got to do that to yourself. I got it. Mm -hmm. Many times we get into that, mo uh, that thing that uh, what I like to call as a Christian laziness. We expect God to do everything. Lacks a days ago. Yeah. We want everybody, oh, feed me, Lord, feed me. Mm. We are so stuck in this spoon feeding from the Lord. Oh, heal me, oh, Lord, heal me. Instead of you going and getting your healing. When the word have declared directly to us, by his stripes you were healed. Yes. You don't need to be begging for the healing. Instead, you say, healing is mine. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That is yours. That is mine. I take it. Yes. We have to start taking things. Yes. Take authority. Yes. Okay, let's read the 14th verse now. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. 
having put on the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. and having shod your feet with the preparation mm -hmm. of the gospel of peace, mm -hmm. above all, taking the shield of faith mm -hmm. with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts. How many of them? All. Oh. Come on, somebody. How many of them? All. All of them. The joker can throw anything at me. Yes, I can sir. stand. Yes, sir. He can do whatever he wants. Yes. We don't need to be living at his mercy yes, because I got the armor. Yes, sir. Yeah. I got the shield. I mean, like kids these days, they play these games, and in those games, they have the shields, the armors they build. They continue to build, and that they have this beautiful uh, mansion that they build. Uh, uh, my son was coming to me yesterday, the other day, he was telling me, Dad, I built you, uh, I, 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 I built a house out of a rock. I built a mansion out of a rock. I'm like, that's good, son. But, you know, you and me can't live in it. It's just <laughs> in that imaginary world. But I want us to get something out of it. Out of that is, we are so good at building things. We are good at building houses, we are good at building this, we are good at doing all those things. Why can't we do that with the kingdom of God and the tools and the armor that God has given us? Why can't we get into the, the, the battles or the, the issues of life with the armor of God? Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. We are trying to put all these things right now. We look for the best of the clothes. What is it that's going to protect me? What is it that is going to help me? We look for all these things. We look for all the securities. When God has said, I have given you the coolest armor you will ever come across. That's the coolest armor you can ever get across. I mean, right now, you know, you see the bulletproof jackets and this and that and that that protects you in the physical body. But how much more this will protect you? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. How much more? Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be living with the armor. A soldier is someone, a warrior is someone who never, never brings his sword down. Mm -hmm. He is always battle ready. Mm -hmm. Many Christians have become wimps because they don't even know Cowards. there is a battle. Cowards. There is a battle upon them. They have become wimps because they have not prepared themselves for the battle. That's right, Pastor. They have become so weak because, you know, they don't see things for what they are. Come it's on. a battle. You know, the kids hear their souls to win them, to keep them. It's a battle. Every day. You have to wage that battle, and you cannot do it without the armor Every of God. Day. You have to have, you have to put on the armor of God. Many of you are sick because you have not been appropriated in wearing the armor of God. Mm. Many of you are experiencing defeat in your life because you have not been acclimated in putting the armor of God. We are not putting the armor of God because of that we have been open for the devil to attack you. We have been open for the devil to steal, kill, and destroy. He is having a success party over us. Mm -hmm. It's because you have not put on your armor. Amen. Now he goes on and says the 17th verse. And, it, take, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Have you noticed something? I'm not going to talk much about the armor today. It's a different study. I'm going after something else. <laughs> have you noticed? I just want to make one mention of something and then we will move on. You have the armor to cover you every part of your front body. There is no piece of armor to cover. There is no piece of this armor to cover your back. Your back will always stay open. Why is that? 
God, God's government. Nah. Your partners. Yes. That's why we are a body of Christ. We have each other's back. Amen. We have each other's back. Mm -hmm. We got to watch each other's back. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going into a war as a team without his body watching over his back. Amen. Which are without that, if that is not the case, the team will never succeed. Mm. Right. The team will never succeed if you don't figure out how to watch the other person's back. Because mm. you can't watch your back. But you sure can watch the other person's back. Mm. So how, how much are you dedicating yourself in watching your brother's back? Uh -huh. How much are you dedicating yourself to protect someone else's back. Mm -hmm. mm. Because the, 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 the devil has, has influenced us so much with the selfishness. And we have been caught up so much in me, myself and I. Me, myself and I. Mm -hmm. We are not thinking about what is it, for, uh, what is it that I am to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same thing is true in marriage. They are not watching each other's back. You are always so selfish that you have been so uh, soaked up in this ideology of me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. That's right. Me, myself, and I. But the Lord says, no, no, no. I, you, I have created you as a body. You got to watch each other's back. Mm. Even though you may not like your neighbor, can we say this to each other? I got your back. Amen. Let's do that as a faith declaration. I got your back. Come on, somebody. Let's do it. I got your back. I got your back. I got your back. We got to watch for each other's back. Nobody is going to do that for us, but us. Amen. If you are expecting the government to do that, no, they are going to stab you in your back. If you are expecting for somebody to do that for you, they are going to take advantage of you. But it's us, we got each other, the body of Christ. Unfortunately, in the body of Christ, we are stabbing each other. Right in it. We are stabbing each other. We are brethren, ain't it? Oh, I don't like you, but it's okay, you my sister. I know you're crazy, but I am, I'm with you. You're my sister. I know you're a troublemaker, but I know that. I know that. But I'm going to be with you. I'm going to have your back because you're my sister. You're my brother. I don't want to put up with you because you're pretty self. I will put up with you because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Not only I'm going to put up with you, but I will have your back. Yes, amen. I will have your back. Amen. I can just preach on that, but I'm not going to do that now. I know I can, but I got to move on. God has given me a mandate. Okay. Let's go with me to the book of Judges, 15th chapter. I always like stories. I like to depict things in a story format. When I see a story, it makes more sense to me. Let's go to the book of Judges, 15th chapter, starting from 9th verse. How many of you all know Samson? You heard about him? Yeah. <laughs> this is one of his stories of valor I like for us to study on. Yeah. Starting at verse 9. Judges 15 chapter starting at verse 9. Now the Philistines went up and camped in Judah and deployed themselves against Lehi. And then the men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? So they answered, We have come up to arrest Samson, to do to him as he has done to us. Mm. Then three thousand men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock of Ephraim and said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines rule over us? What is this you have done to us? And he said to them, As they did to me, so I have done to them. But they said to him, We have come down to arrest you, that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Then Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not kill me yourself. Now look at this, look at this. Samson was being betrayed by whom? Mm -hmm. His own. Mm -hmm. His kin. His own people mm -hmm. are betraying him. This is what we are doing as a body of Christ. 
we are trapped. We are actually uh, giving away the anointing that God has given us. Wow. Not no more. Wow. We have been giving away. We are trying to give away to make peace with the world. What are you giving away? You are giving away your anointing. Okay. Samson is the anointed. They are willing to trade him off. So that they may not have a war with the Philistines anymore. Guess what? If the anointing wow. is gone, you're already enslaved. Wow. You're already enslaved. Okay. That is exactly what the devil is trying to do to the body of Christ. They, he wanted us to give up on our anointing. Okay. Wow. You have been anointed by the Lord. You have been appointed by the Lord. And now you are giving up on that. There is, it is no difference between this and Esau giving up on his birthright for a, for a food, for a, for a meal, for a morsel of meal. Amen. It's no different. Amen. You don't even know what you are giving up on. It's not even a trade. You're not getting anything back from it. Instead, you are losing everything for it. True. Amen. If there was Samson, that is who he is go who is going to protect. Now Samson is in a dilemma. He says, hey, 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 swear to me that you will not kill me yourself. Amen. You know why? He can't fight his own. Amen. He can't fight his own, his brethren. The same problem with David. He never killed Saul. How many times was he given a chance? But he never killed it. This kid who killed his, who, who chopped his head off and came to David thinking he's going to be rewarded for it. Instead he kills him. How dare you touch his anointing? I've been telling them that. How dare you touch his anointing? Amen. Don't you dare push away the anointed one that God has put in your life. Don't you dare put away the anointing that God has put in your life. It is important. That is what is guarding you. That is what is protecting you. That is what God has sent into your life to watch you back. The Lord has put that anointing into your life, that anointed one into your life. So you may have the protection. But now look what, that same person, that same anointing is being given to the enemy's hands. I've been telling them that. And that's what we are doing when, <laughs> you know, we don't have to do much, even if you are backbiting. You better come out. Even if you are backbiting about the anointed, you are giving him come up. Come on. You are giving her up. You are giving up on that anointing. Come on. That God has purposed into your life. Come on. Okay. And this, this is where I think this is the biggest dilemma Samson had. No, no, no. Like even in the, in a way he's like, don't, don't you kill me, but give me to your enemies. Amen. I'm okay with that. Give me to your enemies. Let the person who raises against me, let that be someone who is a healer, not somebody who is my, of my family. Mm -hmm. I don't want my family to get against me because I can't fight my family. Mm. I shouldn't fight my family. That's true. God has not given me that commission. Don't touch my anointed. Mm -hmm. All right. That's why I don't speak bad or ill about any other person that may have done wrong to me. Mm -hmm. Even though they have done wrong to me, they are part of my family. Mm -hmm. They're part of my body. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can come to me, there was a time I was so upset with a man of God that has abused me, mm. badly. Somebody was coming to me to tell me about, oh, you know what they were talking about you, you know what they were doing about you. I was like, yeah, this was so, my flesh so wants to hear that, because I need to find my justification in it. Mm -hmm. I can feel good, you know what, that is exactly what I felt, now you are seeing it. I wanted to say that. And I find that it's all my flesh that was trying to make me do that. But I chose the path where the Lord said, do not touch my anointed. I never have answered that person's call. Even till today, you have something bad to tell, 
me about someone, you can inform information. If you are expecting me to get riled up with you, I'm sorry. I won't. I won't be the person who will throw the stone against somebody. I don't. That is not ministry. We are ripping apart. We are, we are tearing each other. That is not what God has called us to be. You know, the kids right now, they are being pit against each other inside. Every day. Every day. Why? Every day. The, the, you know, it, 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 we are all, while they are telling, it's the outsider that is your enemy. No, 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 it's the inside that is destroying me more. Yeah. Yeah. That is destroying me more what is happening inside. I think it is time for us to revolt against it. Where, the, where Samson made this commitment saying, swear to me that you will not kill me yourselves. Mm -hmm. 13th verse. So they spoke to him saying, no, but we will tie you securely and deliver you into their hands. Look, look, look at this. Look at this thing. You are delivering your own brother to be killed by somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You are tying his hands. How many of you believe Jesus is your Redeemer? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe Jesus lives in you? Yes. yes. If so, aren't you supposed to be your brother's Redeemer? Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> you want Joseph's blessings. All of a sudden you want to become the Prime Minister. You better come on. <laughs> but he never became the Prime Minister without being the Redeemer of their brethren. You better come on now. You can never have position without responsibility. Yeah. Amen. You can never, or you should never have a position without responsibility. True. You know very well if a mother leaves a child in a hot car, you call her irresponsible. Mm. True. He was put, she was put in a position that she was not responsible for. A mother who is going and getting herself high when the kid is sitting in the back of the seat. Mm -hmm. You know very well when you see that you say, Mother, you're being irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Stupor. And the same thing, there is no difference between us and them. They're doing in the physical, we're doing in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. We're not being responsible toward us. It is a position that God has given for me to be your brother, for you to be my sister. Keep on. Let us also be responsible with keep each keep other. Keep yeah. Brothers, keep on. We have to watch each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have to watch each other. Mm. You might be going into a place that you may not, you may, you may feel, you may be attacked so badly. It's my job to tell you, hey, guess what? Stay here. Let me pray with you. Let us see how the Lord is going to unfold this thing. Let us see. Let us wait on this. Let us see through this thing. And that's why the Bible says in a multitude of counselors there is safety. When the brethren are talking. When we are able to be with each other, watching each other's back, we create the safety net for us that no enemy can withstand. None. That is exactly what Jesus has done for us. None. He created a strongest force around us that nobody can invade that. Nobody can break that. That's why he boldly declares, against that gates of hell shall not prevail. None. Thirteenth verse. Now, no, but we will tie you securely and deliver you into their hands. Mm -hmm. But we will surely not kill you. And they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily, mightily upon him. Oh, come on, look at this. The Philistines came shouting against him. Now what happened? The Spirit of the Lord came upon, mightily upon him. Right on him. Amen. Mightily upon him. Yes, he did. Now think about that for a moment. His own people, the, his own people have delivered him to the enemy, but the Lord have not left his side. Didn't do it. 
Isn't that so great that we can see a God who says, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Nor forsake you. I know some of you misunderstand me. Some of you think I'm a fool, but it's okay. The Lord is not going to leave me. The Lord's anointing is not going to leave me. That is what we count on right here. Are you waiting for the Spirit of the Lord to come upon you? Or are you appropriating Him that is on you? Think about that. Think about that for a moment. We are waiting for the Spirit of the Lord to come upon me and stir me. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, come fall on me, Holy Spirit. Or are you trying to appropriate Him believing that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me? Already. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me. For He has anointed me. I believe we need to declare this thing today. The day of Pentecost, what happened? The Spirit of the Lord have come upon us mightily. Mightily. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon us mightily. So today I like for us to have this as a confession. I want us to remember, we all, most of the Christians acknowledge the Spirit of the Lord is in me. But I want also to appropriate the Spirit of the Lord is on you. Right so. Okay. Is on you. Right so. Because when the enemy comes, he sees what is on you, not what is in you. Amen. You best showcase. That's why I'm talking about the armor of God now. You got to show him. I got it, man. I got the armor of God. I have put it on. Now I'm giving you here. The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon me. Right on you. Come on now. Come on. Let's do this thing. The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon me. Come on. Let's do it again. The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon me. Come on, everybody young here, let me see this. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon me. Yes. Hallelujah. The ropes that were on his arms became like flax. That is burned with fire and his bones broke loose from his hand. Unless and until you appropriate the anointing that God has poured upon you, those chains are not going to leave you alone. You have been chained. Whether you know this or not. You have been chained. And then things need to fall. Down. And if they need to fall, you best have the Spirit of the Lord on you. Yes. When He, the consuming fire, is coming on you, there is nothing, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Shall. Now the hands are free. Now the hands are free. Many of you, we have to understand, this is the year of a jubilee. The Lord have come to declare that upon us, that you have been set free. Amen. The year of Jubilee is upon us. So now let us take it upon it. Now let us put it on us saying, The Spirit of the Lord has come mightily upon me. The Spirit of the Lord has come mightily upon me. If you are looking for a money river to flow, if you are looking for a healing river to flow, if you are looking for some dimension to change, come on now. You stand in front of it and say, The Spirit of the Lord has come mightily upon me. The hands that have been tied will be freed. Amen. The hands that have, you know, many, oh, thank you, Lord. Many of you have not gone to where God has called you because your hands are still tied. Uh, you have not appropriated the Spirit of the Lord upon you, you have not put it on you. It's time for you to appropriate it. Now, appropriate the Spirit of the Lord now. upon you. And when you do that, burned with fire and his bonds broke loose now. from his hands. Now look at this, 15th verse, read it, read it. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it, and killed a thousand men with it. Oh, come on somebody. 
a jawbone killed a thousand people. Mm -hmm. wow. A jawbone killed a thousand people. The last time I saw some of my people, they are good at eating bones. They ate them jawbones too. Mm -hmm. But that same jawbone has been used by the Samson who killed a thousand people. Donkey's jawbone. Somebody up here, here probably kids are thinking, oh, these people eat donkey's jawbone. Yeah, there are people who eat that. <laughs> there are people that do that. I know them too. Not us. <laughs> Not us. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Now, he found a fresh jawbone of a donkey. Now, I want us to think about something. He found it. That means he didn't come and show himself. He found it. He was looking for it. He was looking for it and he found it. And when he found it, what does the Bible say? He reached out his hand and took it. Now my question to you is, have you found your job? <coughs> have you found your job? <coughs> Because you're trying to go defeat these thousand men without the jawbone in your hand. You will never be able to have this tool into your hands unless you know how to appropriate the Spirit of the Lord Amen. upon you. The Spirit of the Lord being upon you is the key factor for you to have your victory. Your win. You can bring thousand men down with a simple thing. You can bring this Goliath down with a small rock. With a small rock. Think about that for a moment. That's why I, I, I want you to think about That's why I titled this message today, Put On. We are waiting for the Lord to do things for us when the Lord is saying, Come on, put it on, man. I have given that to you. I have given you the armor. Put it on. I have given you the anointing. Put it on. My Lord. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Because many of you are looking for money to solve your problem. Money or fame to solve your problem. You're looking for your race to solve your problem. You're looking for your government to solve your problem. When God says, I have given you the job on. Take it. Amen. My Lord. My Lord. Woo. Take the job on and run with it. You don't even know how many people, how many things you are going to bring down because the Lord has already given you. Now my question to you is this. Are you taking the shot that the Lord is giving you? Everybody wants a favor. Everybody wants somebody to give them a shot. Everybody wants them, wants to give them an opportunity. But here the Lord is giving you an opportunity. You got to take it. This is mine. This is mine. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Then Samson goes and sings a song here. Go ahead and read the 16th verse. Then Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. Come on, somebody. Amen. God wants to make the foolish things wise. God wants to use the improbable things and accomplish great things. Amen. There are two things I want to appropriate here. Can you find your jawbone? One. And the second thing I want you to know, can you be the jawbone for Jesus? Yes. Can you be somebody he can pick and win thousand souls? Yes. Can you be that something that the Lord can use also? This is always a double fold thing that goes on. You are not only going to be yours, but also the Lord's at the same time. What a beautiful thing that the Lord is doing here. <laughs> He is giving us our job on that, that, that he wants us to see. He wants us to have that in our lives.
Mm. We are not looking for our battle to win. If you are serious about winning your battle, you will look for your job. Only. If we are serious about our battle, we will be looking for our job. Only. Not ideas, ideologies, psychologists, psychiatrists, and all these kinds of things. We are not looking for those things. Let me get my job bone so I may... You know what I'm saying? Yes. I just want... There are so many heaps that I can pile up. There are so many enemies that I can bring down. But the, we need to give the Lord that shot. Go with me to the book of, book of Matthew 16, chapter 24 verse. I'm going to end it right there. Matthew 16 chapter starting at 24th verse. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. What is he saying? Take up his cross. It ain't going to come on you. You got to take up. You got to take up your cross, deny yourself, and take up your cross. You know, many times we look at the cross as a weak thing. No, no, no. That is the most powerful thing to bring down stuff. It is the cross that turned upside down. It is the cross that bankrupted sin. It is the cross that resurrected the dead. It is the cross that healed the sick. It is the cross that gave sight to the blind. It is the cross. Amen. That's why he's asking us to say, take up the cross. Amen. Take up the cross. No, you, 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 he didn't say, take up my cross. He said, take up your cross. Deny himself and take up his cross. I'm going to make a statement here. Your reward, your reward process is through your works of cross. You can never see the heaps unless you go through the cross. Unless you put on the cross. Your reward process is through your works of cross. Take up his cross and follow me. God is asking us again the same thing today. Uh, uh, you can read the rest of the, the thing. 27th verse I like to read. For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father's Father with his angels and then he will reward each according to his works. Amen. You best get busy with the works of cross. Taking up on my cross. Taking up. It's not going to fall. The Lord take it away from me Lord. Lord put the. No, uh, uh, uh. I'm going to take up my cross. I'm going to put on my armor. I'm going to put on my anointing. I'm going to put on these things on me today so that the Lord can work through me. According to his words, as surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Isn't that glorious? Go read the Luke, uh, Luke reference for me, please. I just want to end it here. Let us all stand up right now. Let us all stand up. Go to the Luke reference. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, starting at verse, verse 18. Let us all stand up and take up our Bibles. Go to that reference if you can. Luke chapter 4, standing at verse 18. Starting at verse 18. Go the ahead and read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, mm -hmm. because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind to set the, at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. The Spirit Amen. of the Lord Amen. is upon me. Amen. Can somebody declare that with me? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on, somebody, let's declare it. The Spirit of the Lord 
is upon me. For he has anointed me. For he has anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to end with these few questions. The questions are, have you found your job owner? Yes. Have you found your job owner? Yes. Amen. Now the question, the next question is, what do you do with what you found? Question. Samson just didn't find the bone. He took the bone and he used it. Amen. 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 What do you do with what you found? It's not about getting excited about the revelation, but what you do with the revelation. Now the statement. The jawbone is your cross, your armor. Your anointing. That is your job. Okay. Now look at this. What you can't do with the known, it will be hard to do with the unknown. Mm, true. Mm. What you can't do with the known, it will be hard to do with the unknown. Because the Lord is trying to get us into the unknown realms. If you can't Learn how to put on the armor of God and take up on the cross. Those are the things that have been revealed. You will never be able to see what the Lord is taking you into. There is so much unknown the Lord is taking you because he wants to give you the secrets. Amen. The hidden treasures of the secret places. Hidden treasures of the secret places. Can somebody appropriate that? Hidden treasures of the secret places. Come on, somebody. The hidden treasures of the secret places are mine. Woo. Glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for your power that is in here. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the cross. I'm going to take up my cross and I'm going to put on my armor of God. I'm going to stand, Lord, with all these things that you have given me. I'm going to stand, I'm going to bring things down. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand to my right. It shall not come near me. Amen. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, for the hidden treasures, Lord. Hidden treasures that are being revealed to us because you're taking us to the places you're making us see things. Oh, we bless you for that, Lord. Hallelujah. Divine opportunities, divine favors are coming into our lives because you have made them possible. We are committing ourselves to put on, to put on your armor today. We make a choice to put it on. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, let's leave the service with a confession. Amen. Amen. You got something out of this? Yes. Give God some glory. Give God some glory. Give God some glory. God is doing something great in our lives. Amen. Amen. All right, let's do the confession. Three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing and we are filled for His glory. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed and a prosperous week. Amen. Amen.